Father, we thank you for your precious word. We ask you to take it from the pages of the Bible. That your Holy Spirit would be the translator into our hearts. That your Holy Spirit would explain to us what you want us to know. And empower us to apply it and walk it in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for your warm welcome. It really is a privilege to speak uh, at a brotherhood meeting. Since I met uh, Vardan Haratunian 15 years ago, I have known this word, the brotherhood. <laughs> we were brothers, <laughs> and I knew I was a brother of yours. <laughs> but here we are together in the same room. <laughs> We were always one in spirit. Now we meet face to face. Just like one day we'll, we will meet him face to face. And it's wonderful to tell you that right now in England, in my city, in fact in my house, there is a meeting like a brotherhood meeting. It's happening right now. So time doesn't come between us either. Space doesn't come between us. And I bring greetings from Milton Keynes in England. Yes, Milton Keynes So I would like to read from the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. I put my watch on the platform. We're going to read from Daniel chapter 2 verse 20 to 22. Daniel Hosset was at Toroshna Linia, son on a habitian habitanit, for of a demnan name as to Sunus or Sune, Naebor Pokuma Jamanak de Nujamene, Takabor Nereches, no Takabor Nerkakum, Nai Mastun Dalisimas on Neri, Yevi Mastun Rans of Kerhaskat or Sunune, Naebatai Dum Horin Utatu Banere, Giti Tainshka Mutimage, Yav Lusan Rahed Benakum. Amen. We spoke a little bit about Daniel at our seminar. <coughs> he clearly had a close relationship with God. You know, in the Bible we read that God revealed his works to the people. But he revealed his ways to Moses. The people could see the works, but Moses was a friend of God and he knew God's ways. I think of this way about Daniel as well. When he says he gives wisdom to the wise, and knowledge to those who have understanding. What does he mean? They're already wise. They already have understanding. But there's always more. You know when Jesus said to his disciples, to those who have, more will be given. The more faith you exercise, you grow in faith. 
The more revelation I receive from God, the more I get. But it's very important that it leads somewhere. I have had a lot of revelation from God's Word, from God's Spirit. But what is the world waiting for? What is the world groaning for? For that revelation in me and in you to be made manifest. To become a reality. We read in Romans, the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. For us to be who we really are in Christ. And Daniel is a wonderful example of this. In an alien culture. A foreign culture. In the Babylonian Empire. And I see a very important message in the book of Daniel for us today. Certainly for us who live in Europe. I know it's true also for the United States. And you can tell me if it's true for your own country. But in many ways I feel we're living in Babylon. Everything around us is just like Babylonian culture. And it's very important that we cling to God's word. Because there are many other voices around us. And Isaiah says, when his word goes forth, it never returns to him void. Yes, when God's word goes forth, it never returns empty or void. But it always accomplishes what God intends. So a lot of my message today is about clinging to God's word. Staying very close to God's word. Like a magnet. And not to my surroundings. Clinging to God's kingdom, not what's around me. I hope you can translate this, but at our seminar we talked about alignment. Being in line with God. <coughs> Coming in line with God. It's not about having a balance between life on earth and life in heaven. It's not so much about balance. Your balance may be different to mine. No, it's coming in line with heaven. It's It's not changing God's word to fit with my experience. It's seeing my experience in the light of God's word. We were speaking at the seminar. I was with three other people. And someone talked about the reality around us. There are lots of things around us which may be true. Because they are facts. In a sense, it is reality. But it's not the reality that sets us free. 
When Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, he wasn't talking about the reality or the truth around me. He was talking about a superior truth. A superior reality. Heaven's reality. This is what sets me free. Daniel was a slave. But he was free. In what way was he free? Because he declared God's truth. He lived by what God said. Not by what a Babylonian emperor said. And Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed that he brought Daniel closer and closer to himself. Daniel changed things in Babylon. He made a difference in Babylon. So much so that Nebuchadnezzar, he called Daniel's God the Lord of all lords. Lord over all the gods. This is the difference being a Daniel can make. Because uh, Daniel was able to dress like a Babylonian but think like a Jew. Babylon was covered in gold. It was the most golden city ever on earth. Even Rome never had as much gold. In fact, the Roman Empire never even reached Babylon. What they valued in Babylon was literature, wisdom, visions, magic, sex, astrology. These were the things they valued. But they didn't value life. It was easy for Nebuchadnezzar to end someone's life. Even his closest advisors would be put to death. This was a spirit at work in Babylon. A Babylonian spirit. Does it remind you of anything? It reminds me of life in Britain. It reminds me of life on earth today. And in the book of Revelation we read more about, about Babylon. We'll return to that in a moment. In Babylon there was a magnificent gate. It was called the Ishtar Gate. Again it was covered in gold and beautiful blue tiles. I wish I could show you an image of it. But it was an evil gate. Through the Ishtar gate, the Babylonians paraded all their gods. There were pictures on this gate of 337 demons. 337. There were pictures of snake gods. Gods like snakes. And through this gate, the Jewish people were led as slaves. Including Daniel. By the way, did you know that Daniel grew up in the reign of King Josiah. <laughs> Josiah was a good king. Daniel had a good foundation. 
So what you're doing with your children and young people in the Brotherhood and Script Union is very important. Teach a child in the way he should go. And he will not forsake his path. The number 337, when you take it as Jewish numbers, it spells the word hell. No wonder the Jewish people called it the gateway to hell. And this is the world that Daniel lived in. Because he trusted God, he was able to flourish. He was able to prosper and be successful. And you know, although Daniel, he was made to learn all the magic, all the astrology, all the visions of the Babylonian Empire, although he had to learn all of this, he trusted God and we read in scripture that he was ten times more wise than all of the emperor's advisors. Now that gate, the Ishtar gate, in the early 20th century, some German archaeologists found it. And it was taken brick by brick, stone by stone. And it was taken to Berlin. Isn't that interesting? Because in the German Empire, there was the same hatred of the Jews. And another thing that was taken to Germany at the beginning of the 20th century was something called the seat of Satan. Where have you heard of this before? It's in the book of Revelation. When John was writing to the church in Pergamon, that is where the seat of Satan was. And again, some German people took it to Berlin. And Hitler, he actually made a replica of it for the Nuremberg rallies. In 2008, Barack Obama, he made a replica of it in Denver for one of his rallies before he became president. And recently, in London, this year in London, I study, in Trafalgar Square, there was built a replica of the Ishtar Gate. And it was also a replica in New York. Why all these things being taken to Europe and the US? Why? You know, in English, Ishtar becomes Easter. Ishtar was a fertility goddess. Fertility for producing children, for sex. And she became known as the Queen of Heaven. And of course we know that all around the world, Easter is celebrated instead of the Feasts of the Lord. Instead of the feasts that God gave us. The, the festivals that God gave us. Remember, God has given us Passover, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles, Tabernacles. Uh, it's a feast in Jewish 
uh, in the Old Testament. He, he gave us these. Um, he gave us these feasts to order our year. I wonder if Daniel lived with these feasts when he was in Babylon. I think he probably celebrated the Jewish feasts in Babylon. And did you know that in Strasbourg, the European Union Parliament it is a replica, a copy. It's a copy of the Tower of Babel. Did you know this? There's a painting by von Bruegel. And when they built the European Parliament building, they copied this painting of the Tower of Babel. And the leaders of the European Union, they said, what was started at Babel, we will finish. And their saying was, many voices, sorry, many tongues, one voice. And like the Tower of Babel, we will get to heaven without God. And on the flags of the European Union, and on the stamps of the European Union, postage stamps, and, and on the coins of the European Union and the banknotes, there is this building. And there is also an image of what Revelation calls the Scarlet Woman. She's sometimes called the Whore of Babylon, the Prostitute of Babylon. And you can read in Revelation 17. Where she's riding, no, we're not actually going to read. Where she's riding on a bull, a beast, a bull. And outside the Parliament building, there's a statue of this woman, a naked woman riding on a bull. Right out of the book of Revelation. And some say she is Europa. She was a Greek goddess. Maybe you were heard about the vote we had in Britain. About leaving the European Union. Can you now see why many of us were very glad to leave the European Union? Not because, not because we hate Europeans. We love our friends in France and Germany and Italy and Spain. We love them. But the European Union is an anti-Christ structure. It is like a modern day Babylon. And we prayed for many weeks before the vote. And we continue to pray now. To see it become a reality. It would be like the, um, the Israelites coming out of Babylon. It doesn't change everything for Britain. It's still not a Christian country. <laughs> but it's a big step for us, symbolically. And now we have a new Prime Minister who only the other day, when she was making a speech, she was blessing the people of Israel. And she was saying, in this country, there will be no anti-Semitism. 
Եվ ասաց, որ մեր երկրում բրիտանյայում ոչ մի անտիսեմիթական հակահարյա կան բաներ չեմ իտեղ։ So Daniel said, Daniel ասում է, that God changes the times and the seasons. Որ աստված է փոխում ժամերն ու ժամանակները։ He removes kings and he raises up kings. Նա տապալում է թակավորներն ու նա է բարձացնում կարգում թակավորներ So these are amazing days we are living in. We would love you to pray for Europe as we pray for you. We all need to pray for the USA. A similar process is happening. And in my last five minutes, I just want to encourage you because we read in Revelation chapter 18 that Babylon will fall in one hour. We look at these empires and we think they're so powerful. Babylon will fall in one hour. What did Jesus say? All authority is given unto me. So now you go in my name. He gives us authority. If he has all authority, how much authority does Satan have? Yes, he has power. But he doesn't have the authority to exercise his power unless, unless I give it to him. Like Adam and Eve did. And I give him authority to exercise his power when I agree with him. So let me ask you, who are you agreeing with? Are you agreeing that everything is hopeless? Are you agreeing that we're finished? Are you agreeing that Christ's church is going down? Or are you agreeing with the kingdom of heaven? That he is king of kings and lord of lords. That he has already won the victory. That he has overcome. And we are complete in him. That he has given us everything we need. When I talk to people in Armenia, I have heard several times the word chaos. And confusion. Confusion. People don't know what to think, there is chaos. Let me tell you, this is not God's plan. We must not be content or happy with chaos. This is what God says through his prophet Isaiah. For thus says the Lord. Who, oh, do you want to read it? Yes. Isaiah 45, verse 18. So when we read, he did not create the world in vain, and you look up that word in Hebrew, in vain, if you look up that word, it says he didn't create the world to be in chaos. He didn't create confusion. 
Na, și pozițiuni cisterte. He didn't create wasteland. Na, anima cisterte. He created it to be in order. Na, cistertele vor fi amen și ca cu care. In line with his will. It can ki have a mat. And let me just read you what Paul says in the book of Romans. He says, yes, verse 17, chapter 5, verse 17. You were meant to reign in life. You are a people who are meant to have dominion. Your life is not meant to be one of a victim. You will rule and reign with Christ in glory. And he calls us to pray now for that to be our experience. He says, arise, shine. Your light has come. Isaiah chapter 61. Can you read? Verse... 4, 61-4. And verse 7. So who are you agreeing with? Which truth sets us free? We need to discover the, the, the power of declaration. Proclamation. We declare who we are and we declare who God is. And we say there will not be chaos. Not in my family. Not in my city. Not in my nation. I believe what God promises is going to happen. He will raise up the former desolations. He will repair the ruined cities. And who are the people he will use to do this? It's the people who he speaks about at the very beginning of Isaiah 61, the very people Jesus talks about when he speaks in the synagogue in Luke chapter 4. He says, the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty or freedom to the captives. And he says, these are the people who will rebuild the ruined cities. These are the people, we are the people who will repair the former desolations. We are the people, he calls, trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness, you know, righteous goodness, God's goodness. So we can be Daniels. I encourage you, you can be Daniels. You can make a difference. You can be God's agents. God's secret agents. <laughs> Here in Yerevan, in Armenia. I thank you, God, for your great plan that you haven't left us 
that in you we are victorious that in you we can see what Daniel saw in his lifetime and that we sense faith and hope rising in us in our families, in our city, in our nation in the whole world may your light shine through us to your glory Amen, Amen.